morning everyone greetings to you in the name of our creator our redeemer and our sanctifier as we are going to meditate today on the theme called family husband and wife based on the biblical passage mark chapter 10 verses 2 to 12 we will mainly focus on the jesus teaching on husband and wife that we find in today's gospel reading before we go into the meditation let us look to god in prayer let us pray. may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight our rock and our redeemer me The Pharisees asked Jesus, "Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason?" By asking this question, the Pharisees wanted to divide Jesus into two camps, as going against the teaching of Moses regarding divorce. For this, they could accuse Jesus of going against. God's law and have stone to death Jesus as providing divorce if they got to take him this time they could then use that to eliminate Jesus from the common people who accepted divorce on any ground and who often follow divorce but as we are meditating upon the theme family husband and wife we will look into deep into the teaching to strengthen our family life and the relationship between husband and wife firstly we will see the family the family is the center of god's plan for the happiness and progress of his children the word of god teaches that how god established families from the very beginning and he shows so many examples of strong family it also teaches us how to have a loving and happy family in our life the concept of family is extremely important in the bible both in a physical sense and in a theological sense The concept of family was introduced in the very beginning as we read Genesis chapter 1 verse 22 and God blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue to it God's plan for creation was for man and woman to marry and have children a man and a woman would form a one plus union through marriage genesis chapter 2 verse 24 and they with their children become a family a essential building of human society we also see early in the family members were to look after and to care for one another when god asks can where is abel your brother can's response was that am i my brother's keeper the implication is that yes can was expected to be abel's keeper the importance of family can be seen in the provision of mosaic law also for example Two of the Ten Commandments deals with maintaining the bond of family. The fifth commandment regarding honoring parents is meant to preserve the authority of parents in family matters. And the seventh commandment prohibiting adultery protects the sanctity of marriage. from these two commandments follow all the various other conditions 
in the mosaic law which we seek to protect marriage and our family the health of the family was so important to god that it was put in the national government government of israel this is not only a old testament event which we see also in new testament that new testament says makes many of the same commandment and prohibition jesus speaks on the sanctity of marriage and against ignis insignificant divorce in matthew chapter 19 and mark chapter 10 even paul goes on to say about what christian home should look like when he gives the twin commandment of children to obey your parents and parents do not provoke your children when we will read ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4 there we can find how paul is teaching the ephesian church and he is also teaching our church and our community this morning by that word that a parent should not provoke or do not provoke your children and children must respect or obey their parents let's now turn our attention to theological concept of family during jesus three year ministry on this earth jesus saw that it meant to be part of a family what it meant to be part of a family when jesus was still talking to the crowd his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to jesus someone told jesus your mother and your brothers are standing outside waiting and want to speak to you then jesus replied to them who is my mother and who are my brothers pointing out towards his disciple he said here is my mother and my brother who whoever does the will of god and fulfills the father's will in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother we can read that in matthew chapter 12 verses 46 to 50 now we must clear up some misconception with this passage jesus is not saying about that biological family is not important he is not is missing his mother and brothers what he is doing here is making the clear theological point that in the kingdom of heaven the most important family conception is spiritual but not the physical family in our world these days we all are caring loving and looking for our physical family which we have in our house which we have in our home our relatives our family our sons our daughters our wife and our husband we are longing for them we are working for them but the lord jesus christ is saying us that we should also think about the spiritual family which we will get in heaven our jesus christ is teaching his disciple and this morning teaching to us that we should also work hard into get into the family of god and jesus christ is saying that it is important to maintain our physical family but it is also very much important to think and work hard about our spiritual family when we are born in a physical family we are born into a physical family and we are member of a physical family but we are, when we are born again 
In Jesus Christ, we are born into spiritual life. My dear congregation, let us, let me remind you that we are already born into a physical family and we are already there in a family member. But the Lord is saying, those who have born again, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, those who have taken baptism in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are the members of spiritual family of God. And as we know, during the baptism, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, as our personal Lord, as our Redeemer, we confess before everyone that I will do this and that. We will follow all the commandments. We will follow all the requirements for the church. We will attend the church. We will give offering to the church. We will work hard to extend the kingdom of God. The Lord is saying, being a family member, we all do our duty. Being a father, I do my duty. Being a wife, my wife do her duty. Being a son, being a daughter, our children do their duty. Being a grandparent, all our grandparents, they do their duty. But being a Christian member or being a member of a Christian family or Christian church, it is what is our duty in our spiritual family. This is the Lord is asking us this morning, are we aware or are we happy to do all our responsibility and duty being a member of God's family, being a member of spiritual family, being a mother, father, we are so much worried about our children, being a parent, we are so much thinking about our futures and our, our life. But the Lord is here asking those who will fulfill the will of God. When his disciple and when the people came to Jesus Christ and said, Master, your mother and your brothers are waiting outside and they want to speak to you. So Jesus Christ told them, those who will follow and those who will obey the commandment which is given by, given by my father in heaven, they will be my brother, sister and mother. As we are going to be a part of Christ's family, it is our duty to fulfill God's will first in our life, then in our family life, then in our society. My dear believers of Christ, are we fulfilling His will? Are we fulfilling God's commandment in our life? Paul also said, Paul also said in his language, we are adopted in God's family, Romans chapter 8, verse 50. And when we are adopted into God's spiritual family, the church God becomes our father and Christ as our brother. How joyfully we are adopted into God's family. Being a sinner, we are not worthy to stand before the Holy God. We are not worthy to pray before the Holy God. We are not worthy to stand before the Lord, but with his mercy, with his love, with his protection, he has given us this opportunity to become his children. When we read John chapter 12, we can see that God has called us to be his servant and also to be his children. How lovely and how wonderfully the Lord has loved us so much that being a sinner, being a man, women, we are adopted into God's family 
and it is our duty it is our time it is our responsibility to be a member of christ family we should fulfill all our duty the spiritual family is not bound of ethnicity gender and social standing as a family member of god's family we are not bound to gender or social standing in our world especially in our india in our society we see that our people even though we all are human being we all are divided into some category some part like gender issues is there social distancing is there social discrimination is there in our society where the people are stating their self we are the higher and they are the lower and they are not allowed to sit with us they are not allowed to come to come into our place where we are in that so that in that society we are living. so many so many kind of discrimination so many kind of people who are objecting other human being but the lord in his loving nature without any gender issues without any social discrimination without any ethnicity the lord is adopting us into his family so the lord is saying by his word that those who will fulfill his father will and those who will follow his commandment they will be my family member and they will be my brother my sister and and the second thing i want to share this morning the role of husband and wife according to christian marriage first let us look into the husband role in a christian marriage here i would like to share three main point for a husband to fulfill first one is leadership first one is leadership the bible makes it very clear that the responsibility responsibility of leadership in marriage falls on the husband's shoulder In First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three says that Christ is the head of the family or head of the every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. This scripture is often misinterpreted to mean that women are viewed as second class. citizen however this is not true at all the scripture state that the husband is the head of wife as christ is the head of the church a good husband loves his wife unconditionally and is a servant leader just like christ as christ came down to lead the human being into eternal life as christ led the people to go into eternal joy prosperity and happiness let us take up this burden in our shoulder to be a father be a husband be a leader of the family we will lead our family to the joy to the happiness and to the god's ministry the second is this unconditional love in ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 the bible commands husband to love their wife just as christ did with the church and gave himself up for her a husband's love for his wife should not be based on her action he should respect the affirm love and her at all times and in all situations on conditional love of a husband towards his wife as christ is our husband for this church for all the believers and christ has loved us unconditionally 
He does not show any condition. If the man will obey me, if the man will follow me, if the human being will love me, then only I will love to them. The Christ has not shown any condition to the human being, but he has shown only the love. And he has goes into the Calvary to sacrifice himself in order to prove his loving nature. All the member, all the husband, those who are listening to this very message this morning, the Lord message is coming to us this morning is that we need to lead our family and we need to love our wives, our children unconditionally, without any condition, without any circumstance, without any, if there is any difficulties in life also, we need to love with all our heart. The third thing I would like to share, the sacrifice, the sacrificial nature of husband. Sacrificial action is an integral part of the husband role as the head of the home. Again, Christ is wonderful example of this. He demonstrated servant leadership by washing his disciples feet. In marriage, being a servant leader means ensuring that the wife's material, emotional, and spiritual needs are met. In short form, we will say husband love is a sacrificial love. After the marriage, when we are getting married and when our marriage procession, when our marriage ceremony is going on in the church, we confess before the Lord, we confess before the people, and more importantly, we confess before our life partner that in every situation, in every difficulty, in sickness, in wellness, in all, every situation, I will love you, and my love will be unconditional love. In all the situations, we are ready to sacrifice everything for our partner. Now the Lord is saying, it is our time to fulfill our promises for our wife and for, for our wife and our life partner. Sacrifice is the true meaning of love. Now let's go to the wife's role in a Christian marriage. The first thing I would like to share, and those are believers, and those the white women who are listening to the message, the Lord is saying, the first thing is being a helper. God made women to be a man's helper. In the Bible, the word helper is only used to refer Eve during creation and God himself. This means that being a helper comes with tremendous power. It is the wife's responsibility to help the husband become all that God wants him to be. And in the same way that God helps us become who he wants us to be. Being a wife, being a life partner, we need to help our husband. We need to help our life partner for what the Lord has called him, for what the Lord has chosen him. We need to help our husband. And second one is showing the respect to our husband. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33, it says Bible commands wife to respect their husband. This means admiring, honoring their husband. A good wife values her husband's opinion, admires his value and character, and is considered of his needs, such as the need for his self-confidence. It is the duty or it is the responsibility of a wife that he, she should respect and honor the 
criticism and the opinion of her husband. This is what the Bible is teaching in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. The Paul is saying to the Ephesian church, being a wife, we should admire, we should obey, we should respect the values and opinion and the character of our husband. And the third one is submission. This is one of the most highly debated and misunderstood role of being a wife. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 3 and 19, the word of God says, wives be subject to your husband as is fitting in the law. However, submission has nothing to do with blind obedience or women being inferior to men. Many people, even during the theological study, we have a lot of discussion over this. Being a wife, being a woman, when the Bible says submissive to your husband, that doesn't mean that we will obey our husband blindly or we will, or we are the inferior to our husband or we are inferior to a man. But it has more to do with wife and trusting herself to her husband. We are entrusting as a wife, as a woman, we are entrusting into our husband. Submissive goes hand in hand. In a family, the wife has to submit submissive towards her husband, and husband has to submissive towards the wife. Submission goes hand in hand with the husband role of leadership. In submitting the wife, gives husband the opportunity to become the leader God wants him to be and fulfill all the role of a husband in Christian life. My dear congregation, as we have meditated upon God's word about family, the role of husband and wife in a Christian family, let us work hard to fulfill God's will in our family. Let us allow Christ to be the head person of our family. The Almighty God has given the responsibility to all the fathers, to all the mothers, to bring up child in God's way. Being a husband and wife, let us show care, love, support towards our life partner. Let us fulfill faithfully this responsibility to glorify God in our family. And finally, let us make our family a channel of blessing for many of us. Let people say that this is the family who fears the Lord. Let, this, let people say that this is the family who obey and work according to the God's then only our family will be a channel of blessing for men. May God bless each and every one through this message. Amen.